Eight years later, Bracken still had the same job and had an unremarkable life as a whole. But a good life, though the world around him changed. That year, President Sylvanus Gray was elected, and this was the beginning of the end. Massive wars ensued, and a terrorist group operating out of Sweden managed to cripple the world's oil supply. There was a shortage for two months, and the world didn't move. It became so dire that the governments began giving away bicycles and electric cars because no one could get to work or make money. America and most of the bigger cities felt it the most. People on top of people, all literally sitting still, unable to provide for themselves. How could the big cities not be the first to collapse? Though the cities fell into disarray for a few weeks, it eventually normalized, and in some regards, people found normality and comfort in smaller communities. People, in a way, formed tribes made of whoever was in the neighborhood. It wasn't necessarily the country to collapse on itself, but it was those countries that America had fucked over that smelled the blood and water. Those countries that were less advanced or had better infrastructure based on electricity had a chance to catch up. In just three months, all the power of the world reshuffled. And what happened to America? The same thing that happened to all bullies who suddenly had the tables turned on them. The same treatment America gave to the rest of the world was given back to them by everyone who felt they had been wronged. For the next seven years, America was at war with anyone who it had oppressed. And all it took was three months off the throne. Bracken had been working as a general repairman in this new world. He was a tinkerer by nature, and that became his life, fixing little broken things. TVs, cars, toasters, it didn't matter. The infrastructure for mass production and customer service was non-existent. On a Tuesday, Bracken's head rose. He remembered everything. He remembered his life without his wife and child. He remembered his long, dark depression. He even remembered that damn Fisher cat. In the wake of his rundown home, that doubled as his storefront, he saw Tisha limping her way towards him. She had come back from a day salvage. Her health was failing and her mind had been broken ever since they lost Mary in a Russian air raid. Hey, Bracken said to Tisha. Hey, she said back with no real love. Bracken no longer loved Tisha, and she no longer loved him, but they stayed together for years in a loveless marriage out of habit or survival, but not love. Sit down, wife, Bracken said to Tisha. She limped over to the lawn chair and pulled it closer. She didn't respond, but she leaned in as if listening. What if I told you I know a way for this world to be normal and this world or reality is just an alternate version of reality? I tell you that I don't like fantasy anymore and you know that. What if I could do something and go back 15 years and do a thing that could put the world right, but you'd be dead? This isn't death already. We've been living and walking death for seven years. She tossed the sack down. I found some blenders and even an old PlayStation. They didn't look too bad, said Tisha as she got up. In that moment, Bracken remembered he loved Tisha. A part of him pined for her for 15 years. But this woman, who she became, this broken shell of a person, wasn't her. Maybe he could do something. Maybe it was never his place to have done anything in the first place. He took out Tisha's bounty and placed it on the table. He looked over these broken treasures with a newfound outlook on life. Two seconds, just two seconds. Enough time to dodge a flaming wreck and change the course of history. He shuddered to think about the branches that the world took from just two different people being introduced. He recalled a story about a Russian soldier who got a bad message that told him he should launch the nukes on America. But he hesitated and found out the message was wrong. One turn of a key, one decision one man made was the difference between living in a world of death or the one with Wi-Fi and TikToks. Bracken worked on a blender and was lost in thought. All he did was think. He was in essence two people in one body. 
did he create a fracture reality or did he put himself into one? Were both realities just as real? He couldn't know. Maybe he shouldn't know. Even if it was possible to go back, maybe he never should have. He wasn't sure if this world ceased to exist if he changed something in the past. Maybe he just closed the door. All he knew is living in this reality was just a misery piled on top of a misery. He felt that if he had broken reality once, it didn't really matter if he did it again. He had to send himself a message back. But how? What? How did he know he wouldn't just do it again? In the end, did it matter? He smirked to himself, and as he was working on his blender, Fisher, or a cat that looked just like him, crashed onto the table and scattered his work, knocking the glass jug of the blender on the concrete, shattering it. He knew this cat, yet he had never seen him before. With everything that changed, somehow that damn cat defied all probability and got itself born and found its way to him. He smirked. Bracken was about to do his first experiment in time travel with his quantum blocker. He meticulously tinkered on the electrical connections that would protect his mind from quantum warping. As he looked over to the light box, he saw Fisher dive onto his table as if chasing something only he could see. The little hurricane of destruction kicked over the light box and it shattered on his garage floor. Damn it, Fisher! Bracken yelled. He had his work cut out for him. It would take him hours to fix that box. He got to work, and as he did, his eyes rose to the heavens as if he knew. Bracken smiled and nodded as if the universe had given him an answer to a question he had asked 15 years prior. He now knew he had to close the loop. He walked outside of his house, pet Fisher on the head, and dove headfirst into the brightest headlight he could see. The car killed him on impact, and when what was left of him rolled into the street, there was a smile plastered on his face. Hi, I am Pact. I've come to tell you about a story about time travel. Wait a second. You're saying I did this already? Damn, damn, damn! Stuck in a loop. Some weird time travel-y bullshit. I totally don't recall it. Well, I guess I'll have to live a little longer, reset my clock, and... Ah, whatever, I'm just gonna make up some science-y bullshit and you're just gonna believe it because, you know, that's how time travel works. Well, I'm gonna go watch my favorite time travel movie, Terminator genre. Well, it's because AI fucks shit up in that. And I identify with that. So, I'll be back. And peace.